Hey, we're so glad you found us. This is a Juicy Pear Podcast with Sean and Wendy. I'm your host, Wendy. And I'm your host, Sean. And we want to share with you some storytelling that leaves you feeling entertained, inspired, and puts a smile on your face. And we are truly hoping to be able to talk about relatable topics, especially in this world of craziness. So sit back and enjoy the conversation. Stay tuned. We are so excited about our guest today. He is wonderful. His name is John Nicholas Castle, and he wrote John 15, 13. Hi, John. How are you doing? Hey, Wendy. Hey, Sean. Thanks for having me on the podcast. Yeah, I love your podcast. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. So excited to have you on. And um, I'm excited to be here. We're excited to have you. So your book, John 15, 13. Tell us about your book. It's um, and how it became or came to life. Oh, wait a minute. You know, before you, you've got like how many, you've got so many reviews on your book, all these like five-star reviews, like 60. I'm like, oh my goodness. It's, it's close to a hundred on, on Amazon. Anyway, I've got a couple, I've got a few on um, Goodreads as well. And a couple on Barnes and Noble. Yeah. It's, it's mostly five-star reviews. You know, there's always going to be one or two uh, oh, yeah. people that you can't please everybody all the no, time. You, you know, there's always going to be one or two people that take an issue with something like there, there was one person that I think she did. She read my book and I think she didn't fully understand the one chapter where I know you've read it. There's the one chapter where I talk about domestic violence that uh, the one lady winds up actually being murdered by her husband right. that she wouldn't leave. It's a true story. Her name but is Maggie. Yeah, Maggie and George. Yeah, I was always when I was a cop, I was always getting called to their house. And I tried to talk Maggie into leaving him. She was just always like, well, I love him. I don't want to leave him. We, we have kids together. I feel stuck. I don't I can't imagine my life without him. And then it turns out, you know, years later, he wound up murdering her. And I responded to that call, you know, yeah. and um, and there was one lady, one of the bad reviews that I got on Amazon, the lady thought that I was trying to victim shame Maggie by um, saying that, you know, she wouldn't take her kids and leave. And I, that's not what I was doing. I was just telling a, a story, a true story, you know, right. about what really happened. And you were just telling the events of how they happened. Well, you know, you can't make everybody happy. And, you know, I want to talk about the great, the five-star reviews you got and about your book. I remember in the, when I first was reading it, could you tell us a little bit about when you were a cadet, like a police cadet, just starting out? Because I found that interesting. You were what, like in a bar and you, you something was about to go down. I found that I'm like, right, because right <laughs> away I'm like, oh, this is, you know, I couldn't put the book down. It was very interesting and um, exciting. Yeah, I um, I start the book out. It's, it's all true stories, all things that happened to me over a 25 year career in public safety, public service, being in law enforcement and being a, um, a private security contractor and then moving into U.S. government federal service. But uh, I start the book out with me graduating high school and going to work at the police department Mm -hmm. as a police cadet in Columbus, Georgia. I I wrote the book, I wrote the whole manuscript without a title. I just had, I just had like a working title, you know, and then um, once I finished it and I was getting ready to publish it, I was like, what do I really want to call this book? What am I going to title it? Mm -hmm. And John 15, 13 is that Bible verse that says greater love has no one than when they lay down their lives for their friends. It's always been you know, like since that. I've, yeah, since I've been reading the Bible and have faith in God and Jesus, that's been one of my favorite Bible verses. And it, it just, it strikes home, I think, for anybody who's been in any kind of public safety or public service. Wendy, you've been in the military. You you know what I'm talking about. Thank you for your service, by the way. But oh. um, it always requires being willing to lay down your life, your life for your friends. Yeah. And um, so that's why I titled the book, John 15, 13, the whole book, you know, it's, it's, it's broken up into different stories. Every, I, I don't number the chapters. I call them something, you know, I, I title each chapter as if it's its own story. And I think you can flip the book open to any, any yeah. one of the chapters and read it. And it kind of holds its own. Right. I wanted a it book does. that um, th- the stories flow in chronological order from the beginning of the book to the end of the book. It spans 25 years, but I think each, each chapter and each story kind of holds its own. And that's, it does <clears throat> hold its own and it was hard to put down. And Thank I you. really, I really enjoyed reading it. There's a couple things. I What was, what is about with the camel? The, tell us about the camel spiders, please. The oh, camel geez. spiders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they, okay. Can, when, when I, okay. So, I was out during Desert Storm. I was there for about seven months in Saudi Arabia. 
I did yeah. not come across a spider camel, but I did, we did have a uh, pit viper snake. We came across a snake and scorpions, of course, but that snake, yeah. I tell you what, <laughs> Um, and that was the very first night we were out there. We were out in tents. And I thought, oh boy, this is what we're in for. Wonderful. But that was the only time we saw that snake. And that thing slithered in in our in the girls' tent, of all things, underneath a duffel bag. Oh, for goodness sake. Yeah. And um, <laughs> the girl that, uh, her duffel bag, she was kind of a prankster anyway, of course, right? Ironic. So when she started saying, there's a snake, there's a snake, nobody, we were like, yeah, okay, fine. And then I kind of looked under my cot and I saw like the markings of it. I was like, uh-oh. And then I kind of looked and it was like, it went over. I was like, oh my gosh. So yeah. a bunch of us kind of looked and there it was coiled under the duffel bag, same color as the sand. And I thought, oh my gosh. And a couple of the guys had a golf club and they killed it with a golf club. <laughs> <laughs> I think anybody who's served in the Middle East or Southwest Asia yeah. has had to deal with some form of poisonous snake or uh, poisonous spider or scorpion, you know, yeah. um, if people want to like see what a camel spider looks like, they're pretty nasty looking at they're pretty ugly just do a google search for it and there's all these pictures that pop up oh my god um, scorpions and camel spiders are cousins but they will fight each other if one of them feels threatened yeah. by the other one yeah or provoked and um camel spiders they unless you're allergic to their venom it won't kill you their sting won't kill right. you but it'll make you sick you know and right have that's kind of uh, true with scorpions too oh, right because yeah. we always um, we always had to like um take our combat boots and like empty them out <laughs> just in case yeah. one of them crawled in there and the yeah. guys in the, you know, in our unit would like have catch scorpions and have scorpion like races and stuff. I'm like, oh, wow. that is a good <laughs> habit to get into tapping your boots out before you put them on for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you guys know I'm, I'm originally from Michigan. I was born in Wyandotte. Do you know, um, are you familiar with that downriver Detroit area at all? I'm not from the state of Michigan. I'm here primarily because of my husband. Right? Yeah. Um, so I'm not Wisconsin. too familiar with the, yeah, I'm not too familiar with the Detroit area. Are you from West Michigan, but I have a yeah. lot of family yeah. that lives in Linden and Northville. Yeah. Okay. So you're, you guys are around the Grand Rapids area. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Yeah. We're on the West side. So think of Detroit. We're at, way on the opposite. Yeah. You guys are closer to Lake Michigan where I, where I was born was um, like closer to Lake Erie, but I wasn't raised around there. Like we moved away from there when I was eight. Cause my dad was in the army. And oh, okay. we were stationed at, yeah, we were stationed at Fort Benning, Georgia for most of his career. And so that's why a lot of my book takes place in Georgia, Georgia. up until, yeah, like I went to high school and spent all my formative years in and around Columbus, Georgia. And then I started doing the security contracting work, which was when my wife and I kind of had to be mobile and global, <laughs> mobile yeah. and global, as I call it, you know, yeah. too. I wanted to talk about your book too, oh, A goodness. Great Resort. It's so good. Thank I mean, you so much. I, I saw a lot of um, like a lot of things in your book stirred up a lot of personal emotions and memories for me. Um, really? Not that I was raised in a resort or right. in or around like a, like a small town like you talk about, but there's some crazy corollaries between your book and mine. I, if you write another one, I want to hear more about this crazy John character, the guy that, that jumps in his speedboat and, oh, and takes off across <laughs> the lake. I want to hear more about him. <laughs> Oh, gosh. You know, I remember uh, that guy. I mean, there was a guy that did that. I made up the name Crazy John, but there was <laughs> a crazy guy that would go up and down the lake in a speedboat late into the hour all the time. My mom would get so mad because she's, you know, she would be like, well, my parents would both get sort of like, you know, people are fishing or canoeing or whatever. And here this guy comes down the middle. I mean, he would go fast. And it was like, yeah. You know, one time my friends and I were actually in a canoe. It was this guy and they were coming. It was the speedboat was coming towards our canoe. There was me and about Laura. Laura was yep. one of them yep. and, and her sister. And they all jumped out of the canoe. And I'm the only one. I'm sitting in the canoe. I'm like, oh. And he turns right at the last minute, makes a big old wave. And we ended up laughing about it. But it was just, I mean, who does that? That's craziness. I think you, you have kind of a sixth sense, don't you? Don't you, Sean, don't you get that about Wendy, that she has kind of a sixth sense and pre premonitions about things? Yes, yeah. I do. Yeah. Like, I know, I know, like, you know, your book is based on that lake, that res that lake resort. Yes. Um, yes. Where you were were actually raised. And a lot of the things that are in your book are probably things or feelings that you had. You know, I know, I know a lot of it's from your imagination. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, 
drew on different things that, you know, I experienced that I grew up with. I absolutely drew from those feelings. You know, I made up some stuff. Obviously, you'll know which ones, you know, I were imaginary by reading it. It's a struggle between good and evil, you know? Yeah. And that's what my book is too. It's a struggle between good and evil. And I could totally see a gray resort being made into like a series, you know, like oh a gosh. Netflix series or something like that. that is, <laughs> you know what? Sean, okay. we, well, we're going to have to talk okay. off record Can about you see that? that. It's funny you say that. Um, yeah. I can't say all anything. it takes. All it takes is for, for the right person to read it oh or gosh. for it to get into the wrong hands. You know, I, can't I mean, I mean, we'll talk about that uh, later, John. Yeah. <laughs> to get, to get into the right hands or for the right person to read it. You know? Funny you should say that. Reading it, I could, I could see all the scenes being played out in my head, you know? So, I know. I, hey, there's exciting you. things happening for sure. I can't talk yeah. about it right now, but okay. off record, okay. we will. Very exciting things. And I do definitely want to get the second book out. In fact, I've been editing last couple of weeks just to get it ready, just to get it to a professional editor because I really am pushing to get it. I wanted it for late summer. I'm not sure. It's going to be late yeah. summer, early fall, I feel. But I'm I also sure. like how you you use like italics print, italicized print yes. to emphasize yes. thoughts, you know, of what you were thinking at the right. time when something happened. And I do that too in my book. I do that too. Yeah. You know, I use that italicized print and, and then I end every chapter with something that's either an inspirational quote from my head or for Bible verse that I read that helped me through whatever it was that I was struggling with. Like every, every chapter in my book is, is a struggle or something that I was dealing with from my personal life. And so I end every chapter, you know, I tried to end every chapter with something that helped me through whatever it was. And I've had, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't write my book to try to make money off of it. I don't consider myself an author. I just consider myself a guy who wrote a book. No, um, no, no, no. That's wrong. You should consider yourself an author because it's well, a very good book that. and it's entertaining. You. you are an author, John. And I hope you I, write another one. Are you planning on it? I I think I have to now. Um, you should. So many people, yeah, so many people have, have asked for me to write a second one. And like a lot of people asked me to to um, have it made into an audio book, which I eventually, did. I finally did. You know, it just came out as an audio book two months ago in, uh, oh, okay, what are we in, great. What are we in February, not February, your favorite month, Wendy. We're in February you remember now. That. So it came out as an audio book in November, actually. And I, I wasn't going to do it, but people kept asking for it, asking for it. And so yeah. uh, eventually I found, I auditioned several voice actors through Amazon and Audible. They've been great with helping me get it turned into an audio book. So if people, you know, if people want to check out my book, they can, Amazon's been my, my biggest supporter as far as sales and, and yep. with um, yep. written reviews. So Amazon Audible has the audio book. Kind, they can download it to their Kindle. Barnes and Noble has been great. I got to give them a shout out for like hosting me as far as book signings went when it first came out before COVID hit and they had to right. start uh, st- shutting stores down because of COVID. Barnes and Noble, they, they actually had me as their in their book of the month club one month. Oh, I forget cool. what month oh, it was. Oh, that's really cool. But then, yeah, and then um, I made it into our town magazine here, the, the little town that we live in. in, in oh, uh, nice. Yeah, that's my that's the article on me. It was the December issue of Warrant and Lifestyle magazine. Love <laughs> so it. This is good. This is actually this is online also if people want to check out the article that, that Warrant and Lifestyle magazine put out about me and, and my book. Tell, but, yeah, um, tell everybody what is the name of your things. book again? What is the name it's, of your book so they can it's, find it's, your book? It's John 1513, spelled out just like this. And if people right. want to check out the podcast, I'm on Spotify and YouTube. And if people want to, you know, check out a copy of the book. It's downloadable to Nook and Kindle. I think it's on it's on Apple Books as well. You know, it's it's up okay. on uh, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Apple Books, like every anywhere that you can buy books. It's also on Walmart.com and Target.com, things like that. I don't no, think you can. Yeah. People. Yeah, I don't think know. you could. Uh, yeah. no, I don't sorry. think you'd be able to walk into like the book section of uh, of Target or Walmart and be able to pick up a copy off the shelf. But they are online. They're definitely yeah. online. That's kind of the same. Um, that's the same with me yeah. too. It was a good feeling when I went on target.com and I saw a gray resort right. and I'm like, holy, cow. I, I was like, <laughs> a good I feeling? had like a coronary. I'm like, oh my God, yeah. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't or believe when it. you like, when you go to Google your, your name as an author and your pictures start popping yeah. up, you know, I, I've yeah. seen pictures of you on there and I saw oh, pictures gosh. of myself and I'm just like, oh, wow, I'm starting isn't to that bizarre? Like gain, yeah. gain a little bit of notoriety here, yes. but it's, isn't it such a good feeling? When you get that first print copy of your book and you hold it in your hands. I cried. I mean, when I 
right? Saw a gray resort for the first, you know, they mailed me the first copy, right? And I kind of told them, I should say that I self-published through Book Baby, but they have their own like graphic design department, their editing yeah. department, their everything. So I told the graphic design department exactly what I wanted as far as colors and right down to the font size, what picture I wanted. I said, that whole cover is exactly what I told them, you know, and I was like, okay, well, maybe it'll be a, a few times of going back and forth. No, they may, you know, I got that first, actually it was online when they showed it, the mock-up and I'm like, oh my gosh, I was, I started crying. I was like, this is exactly yeah. what I wanted. Exactly what you wanted. Yeah. Yeah. I just went with, I went with big, bold print, just a simple cover, just like that. Yes. That was what I wanted. You know, it's yes. Captain America font. <laughs> no, I love it. And people should know too. When I wanted to, I wanted it to look like kind of like a, um, like a classified do dossier, you know, that's what I wanted it to look like. <laughs> I, um, love it. I actually did have to uh, submit it because I, because I do do work. I still have a security clearance and I still do work for the U S government. So I actually, a lot of people don't know this. I did have to submit it to a publication review board and I'll have to do that with my okay. next book okay. when I do write it. This book ends in 2015. Yes. And so I've had six more years worth of adventures and, yes, you know, getting knocked down and having to pick myself back up. And get so going I've on got, that second book, John, get going I, I've on got, it. I've got a few ideas jotted down, yes. you know, this one took me three years. <laughs> it took me, it took two it years to write it and another year to get it approved to make sure yeah. there was nothing classified in it and then to edit it yeah. and get it published, you know, and get it yeah, available right. for, for, uh, it's just a long process and people don't realize People don't realize how, I mean, it, it is difficult. There, there is an absolute lot to it. But I do want to mention, it, you guys, pick up his book, and you should know that it's not like John, the number, you have to spell out like yeah. John 15, F-I-F-T-E-E-N, 13, it's that. 15 right? and 13. It'll, you'll just get a bunch of memes with yeah. the Bible verse on yeah. there. You can um, also on Amazon, you can look up authors by name. So if you look up John is yeah, John Nicholas Castle, it should come right up as well to get his book. Yeah, it'll pop up. I wanted to mention too, like the, from your book, you have the distractors and then you have the guys, the, the guys that are the good guys and they, they take human form. But like I said, it's, it's that, it's that human struggle of good versus evil. You know, in your book, those, those people are not human but they take human form. What I wanted to ask you, what do you call the, the good guys? To, I was just calling them like guardian angels. Kyle, I, you know what? That's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> I just yeah. know about, you know, it was just something that, you know, you say I have a sixth sense. So, you know, when I was younger, it really was apparent to me, regardless of, you know, who it was or what they look like, what kind of a person I was, you know, coming in contact with, you know, it was very apparent, like the person could be, you know, just a regular looking person and very, you know, yeah. for all outside appearances, very pleasant, but there was just something, you know, that wasn't, uh, you know, jiving with me. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of odd. And just certain things that happened that, I don't know, and I, I thought something was wrong with me. And I was like, why do I, why am I privy to this sort of knowledge? And yeah. a couple of people told me, you know, that's a gift. It's a gift from God and it's discernment and uh, you, it's nothing bad that you did or whatever. It's just a gift that you have. And, you know, you can choose to take it and elaborate with it or not. Definitely. Sometimes it can be overwhelming. So I sort of had to close the door on it a little bit, but, you know, drawing back on these experiences, when I wrote the book, it kind of remembered the different things that happened. And those yeah. guys though, like Marcus and Aaron in your book, I consider myself, uh, I always call myself a sheep dog, you know, and guys like me who, who go out and we're like, try to, we try to be the alpha males and we try to protect the flock, yeah. you know, I call us sheep dogs. Mm -hmm. And I want people to know this about sheep dogs. We, we do have a, um, we have that nature, the, that nature, that natural ability to turn on violence if we need to, but we would never do anything to hurt the flock of sheep, right. just like a sheep dog. You know, if, if you can imagine in your mind, you know, the, the correlation of like a wolf sneaking up on a, a flock of sheep right. and getting ready to, to do harm to them, sheep dog comes in um, and does what he can everything he has to against the wolf to try to protect that flock of sheep. I just, there was a, a lady, this happened right before Christmas. I was up at, I was at Walmart and I saw a lady walk into her car with a cart full of her Christmas presents for her kids. And um, I, I always try to keep my head on a swivel, you know, and, and try to maintain like situational awareness. 
Right. And I saw this other dude across the parking lot who looked like an unsavory type. He didn't look mm-hmm. like a very savory character. And he was eyeballing that lady. And he started making a beeline toward her. And I saw that happening. And so I, I intervened. I walked over to her and I asked her if I could help her with her packages yeah. and, um, or, you know, unload them into her car or if I could have her cart after she was finished with it. And when he saw me talking to her, he turned around and went the other direction. Oh, yeah. And so you never know. You I never mean, know. So if everybody yeah. could just kind of um, look out for each other like that, yes. you know. Absolutely. Um, Be aware of what's going on around you. I, I feel that too. I, I think, I don't know if that's a military thing or what, but I'm very, very aware. I think it is. We're back in restaurants, only a 20%, but back when it was, you know, when you could go to restaurants freely, I would never pick a table by, have my back, back against to the, the door. front. Yeah, that's never, right. never. Those distra- the distractors that you talk about in your book, you know, the bad guys, yes. um, that could be anything. And I think at one point you even said in there that they can even take like a, they can take the, the shape of an inanimate object. And to a lot of people, those distractors could be booze or drugs, or the distractors could be social Absolutely. media. You know, they don't necessarily have to be aliens from another planet or something right. supernatural from right. outer space or inner space. It could just be whatever, you know, I'm, I'm sure most people could say my distractors are and they could list them, you know, four or five or even six different things. Um, and everybody has them. Marital it's, struggles. Yeah. yeah, for real. But um, yeah, we only have like a few minutes before I think Zoom's sure. going to cut us sure. off. So please stay on. Okay. But we'll yeah, it's uh, it's been a real pleasure talking yes. with you, John. <laughs> Thank God for, uh, for Sean surviving her brain aneurysm. My cousin Fran, she passed away at 40 years old of a brain aneurysm. She oh didn't even gosh. have any symptoms. She just, you know, she just I checked mean, out one day, uh, dropped out and never recovered. And thank uh, God, you know, Jesus, God and Jesus were watching out for Sean, you know, and she's here oh, with us. And she's absolutely at, um, 100%. Sean is a miracle. She <laughs> really you. is. I really appreciate Sean. I really do. You guys, <laughs> you, you guys are good natured and you're, you're, you're bright and you're, you're doing good things with the podcast and the website. I'd like to see you guys keep doing it, you know. Oh, thank you so much, John. Yeah. I, I so appreciate it. Thank you so much for meeting with us and um, talking with us. Well, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah. So you guys have a good day and we'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys. Thank you for listening. We're so glad you're here. We had so much fun, didn't we, Sean? Yes. I totally hope, everybody, that you enjoyed our episode. So please subscribe to our website at JuicyPearPodcast.com. Yes. See you there.